Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, my name is Natasha, and I'm the program manager of the, the ZEG MBA. And today we're going to, to talk a little bit about um, our immersive experience in Silicon Valley, so in San Francisco. And to do that, we have here with us Rebecca Tower. She's the executive director of the executive education in the University of San Francisco. And she's going to help us go through the program of what you're, uh, we're going to learn there, what, you're, what, what it entails, and what we're going to be able to get from it. OK, so if you have any questions, I ask you to write them in the Q&A section and we'll approach them uh, at the end, OK, together. And if you have any notes also, let us know. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you also for joining us. And I pass the word to you. Wonderful. Hello. And so great to see you. Um, we've really enjoyed working with you guys um, in the past for the last 10 plus years. Um, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Yes, um, my name is Rebecca Tower. I'm the Director of Executive Education at University of San Francisco. And I'm coming to you uh, virtually from my, my personal home space, um, but uh, because of all of our restrictions right now, but we uh, this is the actual classroom that when you guys come uh, and visit us in person, and uh, we'll get a chance to share with you. This is in one of our campuses in the downtown office. So as I mentioned, we've been working with um, EZEG for many, many years at this point, um, and we've welcomed so many of the um, MBA students over and EMBA students to learn about Silicon Valley and all the things that make it unique and special. Um, and so we've put together um, a curriculum for uh, which we've delivered and iterated on for many years. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Um, before I jump in, let me just um, provide a, a quick little um, video here uh, for you to guys to get a sense of this program. So this is our Silicon Valley immersion program. <laughs> The University of San Francisco School of Management's Silicon Valley Immersion Program is a unique opportunity for groups of at least 15 executives or entrepreneurs or graduate students from across the world to come to San Francisco and Silicon Valley for three to 10 days to learn all about innovation and entrepreneurship. Silicon Valley Immersion Program not only provides you with hands-on experience on how to brainstorm design thinking, develop ideas for new business, and then you know implement it, uh, but also provides you with the network. We visited a variety of companies, which I found it very useful. You get a chance to talk to a new startup that has been successful and it's in the process of growing. Uh, we had a chance to talk to one of the giant tech companies such as Intel and learning from their experience, I found very beneficial for me. One thing that sets this program apart is our custom designed curriculum. We work really closely with each group that comes here for the program to pick exactly the right lectures and workshops and company visits that will match their learning goals. This is the epicenter of innovation and technologies. Uh, you get direct exposure to professionals who are doing it, professors. They're very approachable and they're very willing to share with their knowledge and connect with you. All of our participants in this program, they love that they can really just come here, immerse themselves in everything that Silicon Valley and San Francisco has to offer, and then go back home and change the world. Silicon Valley Immersion Program was one of the highlights of my graduate education, and uh, it has connected me to San Francisco and uh, also provide me with the knowledge and confidence to perhaps start my own company at some point. So that's a little bit of an overview um, of the program at just a very high level. Um, but now let's take a look um, in a little bit more detail and get a sense. Um, since we've been able to host you all um, for so many years, here is a little bit of what the actual uh, time together will look like. And hopefully you can all see this on your screen. So um, prior to you guys coming to visit us, um, we really encourage um, you to go through some brainstorming activities and think about um, new ventures that you might be interested in um, in you know, uh, pitching, so to speak. So that is the main thread throughout our entire program. Um, so we usually do a couple of kickoff 
kick off events um, a few days beforehand. And we encourage um, you guys to think about, okay, so what could we actually create during this time um, together? And then throughout the week, we actually have you guys um, do some workshopping with some industry experts. We have venture capitalists and as well as some of our academics, um, as, as, as well as uh, myself. I have been a part of a couple different entrepreneurial ventures. Um, and so we all are working as a team to kind of help you craft your ideas. Um, and then by the end of the week, we actually have uh, turned the tables over to you and you guys get a chance to give us um, your own presentation of your new business uh, pitch or idea. And that is given to a panel of judges um, and you will get real time feedback from these folks. Um, and some of them are venture capitalists um, and some of them are angel investors. So that's really the, the entrepreneurship and innovation is really the theme of the week. Um, and I can take you through all of these uh, different courses. But let me show you something else that also may be of interest. Um, so this was the program that we just ran um, recently this year. Again, we opened with a networking event. Um, and then we did a workshop on, on pitching and your elevator pitch and, and, and concept development. Um, and we did that through an angel investor um, that we utilize um, in some of many of our programs. And then we um, heard, got, we gave you guys an, an introduction to Silicon Valley and venture capital. I don't know how many of you, um, if any of you are in startups or are very interested in, in joining startups. Um, if, you, uh, if you are, you're probably very interested in angel investing or how you'll get investments. Um, and also just the whole uh, venture capital ecosystem because it is uh, an interesting place to navigate. And of course it's worldwide, uh, but 75% of all venture capital investments actually happens um, in the US and most of it happens actually in Silicon Valley. So that's why a lot of people, especially those who are interested in, in um, driving uh, entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship even within a company, um, really want to come here and learn more about what the um, experience can be like. So, uh, so we dive into uh, venture capital a bit. And then we talk a lot about um, top uh, emerging um, technology trends, but you don't have to listen to it from me. I will show you one other video here uh, from one of our faculty who can talk about his particular uh, topic. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reichenthal. I'm a CEO, a professor, and an author. And I'm the writer of one of the best-selling books on the future of cities. My course is inspirational, educational, and most of all, a lot of fun. I often ask myself, why is innovation so hard? And I figured it out. Innovation is hard because you're inventing for a world that doesn't yet exist. You are creating for tomorrow. This course is all about exploring and discovering new technologies and how they're shaping the world. This includes technologies such as blockchain, artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles and drones. And also we look at the future of our cities. All of this will shape each of us, shape our organizations, shape the planet, and mostly design the future. So as you can see, as you can see there, um, <clears throat> that's what, just one of our many faculty. That's one of the gentlemen who would be likely to join you um, during this week. So let's take a peek and see some of the other um, factors that we had from this past program. Um, we actually got a chance to hear from um, Hap Klopp. He is the co-founder of The North Face. I'm, I imagine a lot of you could look in your closet and find um, something that the North it says The North Face on it. Um, and so he often joins us, um, but he was the CEO for 20 years. Um, and he talks a lot about the mindset uh, of Silicon Valley, specifically around failure. Um, we find that this is particularly interesting 
interesting for people outside of the Valley and outside of the US um, because he really highlights um, what that ex what failure can mean um, here in, in our culture here and the importance of it, uh, which sounds counterintuitive, I'm sure. Um, but if you're studying, you know, um, you know, lean uh, development or agile um, methodologies, you'll know that failing fast and failing forward is really what helps us bring us to the future faster. Um, so again, we talk a lot about mindset and um, you know, kind of how to cultivate that entrepreneurial and innovative mindset. So he um, shares his experience uh, with us. Um, and then um, in this uh, program that we had last year, we actually got a chance to talk with um, the director of employee experience at Salesforce. Um, so basically he, he has an HR function. He's been at Salesforce for about 20 years. I imagine uh, you're all familiar with Salesforce. Some of you might work with them and be heavily, uh, you know, understand exactly what they do. Um, but they are basically a customer relationship management um, company and they've had just tremendous uh, growth and success. And so he comes at it from an HR our perspective and really talks to us about um, how they've innovated with some of their processes in HR um, and how in human resources and how they've used a lot of the innovative ideas in terms of utilizing like the technology that they have to improve those processes. It's really fascinating. Again, you know, some of it is um, entrepreneurial, but some of it's really entrepreneurial. So if you're planning on um, just wanting to drive change in your existing organization, um, it's wonderful to hear from people who are actually uh, who, are, who are doing this and, and kind of some good examples. So that's Ryan. Um, and then uh, throughout the week, we coach. We have some coaches and we, um, again, as I mentioned, coach you on your business idea. Um, and we, in this program, we also had uh, change management and talking about organizational transformation. Uh, one of the challenges that we see uh, from folks, myself included, we have these wonderful ideas. And even after we get um, funding and buy-in to do them, we actually want to go ahead and implement them. And in order to do that, we really need to think about the change management principles and how we might um, how we might include the user um, into the process. Because if we can come up with all kinds of wonderful ideas that are very viable and very feasible, um, but if they're not desirable uh, by the individuals who are going to have to make the change, uh, guess how much change actually gets um, completed. You guys probably already know from your own experience, change management is quite difficult. Um, and so figuring out ways in which to create it, uh, making it more desirable for the person who actually has to change is hugely important and impactful. So. Doreen speaks to us about that. Um, we have some live events. Uh, events. We did a pitch force event um, last year. So we're coaching you on your new business idea and how to create a wonderful pitch in order to get funding, um, either from you know venture capitalists, angel investors, or internal funding, if it's more of an intra entrepreneurship. Um, but we also provide opportunities for um, all of us to attend these live pitch events. And these are people who um, are pitching to real investors and they get real feedback and some of them get funded and some of them don't. So it's a wonderful real world um, uh, you know, opportunity to observe what's really happening here in this kind of unique um, ecosystem. And uh, in this case, we had another speaker. This is a wonderful gentleman uh, from a startup company. Um, he's uh, from France originally. Um, he co moved here to Silicon Valley to help one of his uh, businesses. He had had a couple early failures, which he really talks about um, again. And, and it's amazing how impactful those were in helping him on his journey. He has now received, I think, 53 million in venture capital funding. And his company's gone grown from about, uh, you know, just himself and a couple of other people um, to over 100 people. And he also talks about the difference in the role that he has to play from being a startup uh, founder to really be now a CEO and, and, and many of you I'm sure in your experience um, know what it's like to transition through different roles and uh, the expectations are really really quite different your whole objective is quite different when you really get into you're into that management um, role versus of course like the skills that you would have as a founder so that's he's a wonderful um, speaker it's really interesting to hear what he has to say so we've enjoyed having him in many programs and, and this group enjoyed it as well this past year we talked a bit about um, building and maintaining high performance teams. So again, this is leadership. Um, so this is uh, an academic lecture around that. Um, and we also had a wonderful uh, world-renowned speaker, Michael Chung. Um, he 
um, came through and talked to us about innovation and really what makes what is considered innovation and how do you have like incremental innovation versus disruptive innovation. Um, and he, especially in this really uh, unique time, let's hope it's a very unique time uh, when we've had so much uh, change happening. Um, <clears throat> he really talks to us about what's the, what are some of the trends that we're seeing. He also has written a book um, on consumer trends. Um, the global pandemic has ended up being a massive consumer trend. And so he talks a lot about what changes we should expect to see uh, based on this uh, massive change that we've gone through. But he has, and, and he has about seven other um, consumer trends. So also really helpful if you're thinking about creating a new venture, um, you know, oftentimes you wanna be informed by what are the major trends that are happening. I believe this, some of this also resonates um, with um, the objectives of the overall uh, MBA that you guys are looking at. Um, participating in. And then the, um, <clears throat> and then again, we have a product development. So in Silicon Valley, we have so many tech companies and product development is really key. Um, so we have a gentleman, he actually used to work at Facebook. He now works at Salesforce um, and as the director, senior director of product management. And so he talks to us a lot about what is um, product development and what is a product manager. It's something that um, isn't highlighted often as much in academic uh, pro programming. So it's something we like to dive into because it's really more or industry, um, you know, it's more focused on, on people with knowledge from the industry. So um, he, he talks to us about his perspective on product development and what that role is in an organization. And we have a wonderful uh, speaker as well from Intel. Um, and, you know, we often take people to Intel, as was mentioned in the video earlier, and they get a chance to, you know, see the building and, and kind of experience that firsthand, uh, which is what we would hope to do with you guys next year. Um, but the, um, this gentleman has written multiple books, one of them on strategic project management, and really talks about how you manage like kind of a portfolio of different products. Um, so he's a wonderful speaker and highly knowledgeable. Um, and so we would be excited for you guys to hear uh, more about him. And uh, let's see, and I think that's nearing the end of our week um, together. Uh, we, and in our programming here, we had uh, one more speaker from Intuit. Um, she is a senior manager in design thinking. I don't know how many of you have already studied design thinking. Uh, we could talk more with Natasha, uh, but design thinking is a, a wonderful um, kind of skill and approach methodology, I guess would be the better term to really, if you're thinking about creating anything new, whether it's a product or service, um, you can utilize this methodology um, to, um, to think more broadly and more innovatively than you would have possibly if we just went and either it, ideated on your own or went and, and had consumer focus groups. Um, this really allows you to think broader and larger. Um, and then, as we mentioned, um, that brings it back to you. So this is where, you know, the end of the week, you guys get a chance to actually um, demonstrate your knowledge and provide your business pitch um, to our judges and you get direct feedback. Um, and it hasn't, it's not part of our program. It has happened. Yes, I do get this question. Um, people have gotten funded um, by coming through. But again, it's not the objective of our program. Our program, it's more of a learning experience. Um, but you are in fact getting in front of people who um, are interested in finding investments. So that's something to consider as well. So that pretty much and you know summarizes our you know program as I mentioned that takes us through this entire you know week together. Um, this you know was the program we did last year, which was the virtual program. Uh, it is quite similar. Well, there are a few modifications that we made from the in person. Um, we are very hopeful that we'll host host you all in person next year, uh, which will be great. So along those lines, let's um, we're going to let you hear from what this experience was like for some of the people who have been through our um, our uh, our program our in-person program <laughs> Andrea, and I'm from Italy. Ah, wonderful. And what uh, university are you with? I'm studying in a Southern Business School in Barcelona. Ah. And we are here in San Francisco studying entrepreneurship for the Silicon Valley Immersion Program. Wonderful. Excellent. And what is your degree um, that you're studying in? Um, we are studying a master's degree in innovation and entrepreneurship. So it's a similar batch. Awesome. What has your um, experience been like so far? 
impressive. Ah. It's been so inspiring to me, like the people shaping the world. Like yesterday we went to Horizon Labs, we saw what the world will look like when the new technologies will kick in. Mm. Or today we saw like a business angel that was investing in all the main companies that shaped the second era of the internet. So it's been inspiring to see where we're going and why we are here right now. And these people is amazing. Like today also we met, had the chance to meet Craig Newmark from Craigslist and it was humbling. Coming from Europe is completely new to me and the mentality is completely new. So it's actually an immersion program where you get to be like with the best people in the same room. So you get to know how they think, you get to share, you get them to share their experiences with you. It's amazing and it's a really a steep learning curve. Okay, this is a nice question. The most engaging part, I think, is the keynote speeches mm -hmm. because lessons, yes, are amazing. But when you get to hear them from the people that lived it, built it, that's to me the most valuable part. Okay, so that should give you a little bit of a sense from um, someone who was able to come and join us in person. Um, but let's hear from your um, some of your fellow folks who came just this year. Love the experience. I I really liked to talk to the speakers and to these amazing people who who su succeed in the companies. That if it wasn't for this program, I, I'm not sure how I'll be able to connect with them. And it, it was amazing to to just hear their stories and they're so so nice, so approachable. From this uh, immersion program is uh, in three words: think global. Uh, think on people and on, on the team. We need to have a good team in order to, to get great, uh, uh, great things. And the other one is diversity. Uh, you talk a lot about it. Um, we also uh, have a, a history of diversity and co embrace other cultures. And I believe that is that, that is exactly the right direction. For me, uh, most of the subjects were completely out, outside my comfort zone, so it was uh, a great opportunity to have uh, I don't know, like expand the horizons, right? Uh, companies in Silicon Valley have uh, the global perspective. I think it was the most uh, impactful thing for me to see that uh, mentality right from the start. You, uh, you have a, a lot of enthusiasm, you are always smiling, that's very nice and it's contagious, so thank you for that, thank you for the experience, you coordinate all the program very well, uh, you and Cynthia, and uh, all the speakers, some speakers were uh, very interesting, uh, some insights of the companies, I really like it. And, um... I also learned how to pitch a uh, startup as a, a startup company, how to pitch and how to do the presentation. And I, I think it's, uh, this is a really fun experience. Uh, intensive experience, inspiring knowledge in networking. Um, like Philippe said, I don't know why company chooses us <laughs> to, be, to be here. <laughs> I think it's something that we had in our PDI um and i i i interest myself very much about the innovation um it's not my my comfort zone at all but but it is a an important an important uh, subject that really inspired me you know, naturally small, think small since we are a, a, a small country but uh i remind you that our systems start in a garage uh, 12 years or 14 years ago, and now it's worth something like 9.5 billion um, American dollars. So uh, I, I think we all have the chance to do something uh, great. Wonderful. And Pedro um, finished us out there. So, um, so yeah, 
Yeah, so that's a little bit um, about our program. Um, but I would be happy to send it over to you, Natasha, and see if there are any questions or if there's any other additional information that you would like us to provide. So thank you, Rebecca, first of all. Um, someone has a question uh, about the coaching work you mentioned. So uh, if uh, will they be able to discuss their specific projects and businesses or will it be more like a group dynamic? Yes, great question. So um, we, the way we do it is we usually put people into groups um, and then that group chooses a uh, business idea to work on. So if you already have a business idea, this is a really great opportunity for you to um, connect with your, your fellow, uh, to basically have a group that will help you on your path. Um, you know, and usually that all actually works out really, really well. Occasionally we, you know, if we've had somebody who really wants to work on their particular project, we've made adjustments, um, but we find that it works really well because often there aren't five people in that five person group that all have something that they are desperate to work on. And if they are, sometimes we can spread them out. There's a lot of things that we can do. Um, so we don't consider it to be an individual project. It is a group project, um, but you can, you know, help, you know, you can have it focus on something that you'd like to have it focus on. Um, if you come and join us, we usually can accommodate that. Okay. Great question. Yeah. Great. Uh, something else. Uh, so you spoke a little bit about big companies and how they can get in, in touch with some of their um, top managers. Uh, and the question is regarding the actual, um, so if they're going to have contact with only big companies, only like startups or will will they be able to contact with, with people in all kinds of stages of creation of a company or big company or whatever? Yeah, really great question. Yeah, so what we love to do is actually have ideally one um, speaker from like a startup company and one from like a medium to large tech or not necessarily tech, but medium to large company, usually in tech because it relates so well. Um, and then um, we often also have someone who speaks to us who's at an incubator or an accelerator. So we offer a couple of different perspectives on, on what it's like. Um, and yeah, so I think it, it, that has always worked out incredibly well um, in the past. And, and we, when we're in person, of course, we get to go to that location often um, and really, you know, see the culture by represented through, you know, what is the, what does the cafeteria look like? And what, you know, what is the, how did they structure everything? It sounds like it wouldn't be as critical, um, but it does sometimes demonstrate, you know, the values of that particular company. Um, and it can, especially in Silicon Valley, um, innovation is really a big part of everything we do. So people are very innovative in their physical spaces. So I don't know um, if you guys have gotten a chance to see a Salesforce building, um, but for example, Salesforce, uh, we have a Salesforce tower that just went up in downtown San Francisco. It's now the tallest building. So it literally changed our skyline, which was kind of interesting to see. Um, it's now 69 floors, um, you know, so it's quite large and it really is kind of like an icon, you know, within, um, the city. And in addition to just that building, they actually created um, a park around the bottom of that building um, that is about four blocks long and about one block wide. But what's even more interesting is because space, of course, and streets and city streets are so busy and, and not it's not very easy to create a park, you know, in the middle of the city, they actually have it elevated um, four floors up. So it's actually, they created a park on top of um, like our transit center. Um, and so Anyway, and they actually even have like a little gondola that you can take from like the street uh, for free. You just take it up and go to the fourth floor um, and you can get off the gondola and such. So, um, but again, just trying to think about community and supporting the community and creating innovative spaces that people can come, you know, and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, thought and support for the idea of, you know, that if you're in an innovative, creative space, it really helps you be more innovative and creative. So um, when we get to go to companies, we're able to kind of see that firsthand. And when we've done it in the virtual space, which we've done as well, then we've um, done more case studies and we've been creative in, in that space. Um, so yeah, so we are, and, and as you heard from, from both of our examples, from people who've come in person and people who've come in the virtual space, you know, um, we're very happy to say that uh, people get a lot out of this experience. It's, and that's, 
that's really what drives myself and my team, all the members of my team, is we really just treasure and we feel it's so incredibly important to create um, positive, enriching experiences uh, for other people. So. Of course, thank you. From our side also, so the, the feedback is, is so great that that's why our partnership keeps keeps working every every year. So that's that's great. Thank you. So any other questions? I ask for people to write if they have any any more any more questions. Something that someone also mentioned is the networking. So will they be able to network between uh, a few of the top managers, but also some students from the, the university? How does that part work? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, um, you know, all of our the folks that uh, present or participate in this program um, are tend to be very open. And so we provide, you know, all the LinkedIn um, information for everyone. So if you want to reach out directly, of course you can. And there's always an opportunity for a question and answer after all of the, the programs. So we encourage that connectivity for sure uh, with all of our speakers and they're very open to it as well, which is great. Um, in addition to that, um, with, uh, you know, when we host people and we have you guys in person, we often look for ways like, so it basically just depends on if we're in session or not. So we have MBAs that come in and EMBAs that come in for certain weeks. So when there are opportunities, we absolutely integrate uh, between them. So, okay. Yeah. I think that's it. It covers a lot of areas actually, actually these questions. So if no one else has, has a question, I think we're going to close this webinar. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. I don't know if, don't know if you want to add anything. I just want to thank you for, for being here with us, even with the time difference, because for you, so have a nice day. For yes, us. thank you. <laughs> have a nice evening <laughs> for all of you. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, no, well, we, we look forward to welcoming you all again. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's our great pleasure. So we really look forward to it. And if you have any questions, um, Natasha knows how to get a hold of me and I'm sure that um, send them her way or send them my way. We'll be happy to support you all. So Thank I hope you. to see you very soon. Thank you. So if anyone has any questions, reach out to us. I can reach out to Rebecca or even if there are more operational stuff regarding the MBA, just let us know and we'll keep in touch. Thank you for joining us today in the end of, of, of this day, now that everyone can go outside. So start enjoying <laughs> again. Thank you. See you soon. Sounds good. See you.